Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Jeff with Two Moose Design, and today I'm going to walk you through the build of these two end tables. I primarily used a CNC to construct them, but if you don't have a CNC, you could always use a bandsaw or like a jigsaw. It would just take a little more effort. Hope you guys enjoy. As you can see here, I already have the panels boot up. We decided to use Select Walnut on these per the customer's request. We used as little light sapwood as possible. And this here is Big Bertha. This is what we'll be using to flatten the panels, just to smooth them out a little bit to save some time in sanding in the end. Ended up sanding these with 36 grit, 50 grit, and 80 grit. It ends up being like a 150 grit finish. So here you can see I already have one of these mocked up just to give you a rough idea of what we're working with. So you're going to go up here, grab a circle, stretch the circle out, and you're going to elongate the circle. Size doesn't really matter, it's more so just to get the shape of the bottom arch of the end table. Make this an outline, grab a square. This square here is going to be the roughly the outside dimensions of your end table. And you can see to the right I added this box here. This gives you the rough dimensions of what we went with for our end table ourselves. And here for the demo, I'm kind of just roughly lining all this up. It's way easier if you just use the alignment tool just to center all this to make sure everything's nice and even. Now you're going to go and edit the endpoints and then slide these in just a little bit to give it that nice little taper. Now you're going to go on up here and grab another square. The size of this square does not matter. This is just to cancel out the bottom portion of this oval you made. Then take it, adjust the depth. Slide the depth all the way to zero. Same thing with the oval. Fill this. Go up here. Send two back. Grab the oval. Fill this. Now you're going to highlight it all. Go up top. Click combine. And boom. There it is. And there we go. We have the, the rough shape of it. I mean, it took a little more time in this original one just to get everything nice, clean, and perfectly lined up, but you guys get the point. So now that that was deleted, I'm going to dissect this one a little bit here. I'm going to use this one because I spent a little more time in this one, and this one looks a little bit better. So go up here to Apps, then you're going to scroll down, and then you're going to find this interlock tool here. Now this notch size here, this is where the two pieces are going to interlock. So you're going to want to grab this measurement with the calipers exactly where the two pieces will interlock together. So I actually went 0 0.02 less than my original measurement, just to make sure everything was nice and snug. I'd rather be too tight than too loose. Don't mess with this here because this will just put everything off center, so leave this at 0.5. The bit size we are using is 0.25. Now that we're back to the main screen, you're going to separate these, create a new page, put one side per page, copy it, paste, and we're going to do the same thing on another page just to, just to separate them, to run them as two separate files. This is the panel for the top of the table. So this is the round part, and the round is actually 21 inches round. We put one clamp per corner. If you look to the left, I entered the inputs we use for our Inventables X-Carve. This will be similar for a Shape Elko, but different machines have different speeds and feeds, so check with your machine to see what works best for you. And again, we cut this circle to 21 inches. Make sure you cut on the outside of the line so you get the actual measurement. And here you can see Jess is loading in this panel here. This will be for one of the bottom panels, which will make the base. Each top round took 20 minutes to carve. And then each bottom panel that will consist of the base took 30 minutes per side. So it's roughly an hour and a half to make one full end table. This one here didn't cut through all the way, so we're just using this Dremel MM50 oscillating cutting head to just zip through the part that didn't go all the way through. And you can see here it's quite snug and does not fit. That's kind of what I was going for just because this was my first official run. So I didn't want it too loose and sloppy. And then to combat this, I just took a little bit off each side with the chisel until I got a perfect fit. I started it on the tabletop. Still didn't fit. Then it was a little bit easier to do this on the floor.
Then I proceeded to sand it down a little bit in this area just to ensure it wasn't too tight because I wanted to be able to move a little bit and not be completely snug. Just like the glove. To cut the tabs, I'm using a half inch flush cut bit. This just slices them right off nice and easy. And then nothing too exciting here. We ended up sanding them to 180 grit. Give it a nice clean finish. This is always a pretty satisfying part. The job is almost complete. Putting a nice beautiful brand on it. Claiming it as my own. I'm gonna lightly hit it with some 180 just to remove them burn marks. And I like to blow it out with the air hose just because walnut's pretty porous and you don't want any of that getting into your finish. And I've been really digging this armor seal here. This is made by General Finishes. It's a, like a wipe on application type poly. I used a foam applicator here. I ended up doing three coats. And then I used these what I call pokey boards to allow me to do both sides at one time. Just some boards with screws in it. And this is the figure eights. So this is how we're going to attach the top. Here I'm not really drilling a hole. I'm more so marking it with this self-centering bit. This is a 5 a's bit. I like these figure eights just because it's a nice concealed way to attach the top and they still allow plenty of movement. I always like to use a screwdriver to tighten them down. You're gonna want to make sure they're nice and flush. Now you want to make sure everything is nice and even all the way around. I couldn't really get my drill at a good angle here to get at it, so I used this Dewalt 90 degree angle attachment tool. I think I got it from Home Depot. I'll put a link down below. And then again, just using a screwdriver to hand tighten everything. You don't want to strip out any of your screws. This was my first time using these figure eights, and I really liked how they worked. They were like perfect for this application. And that's it. Thanks for stopping by. If you guys liked the video, please like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and come check us out on Instagram. We hope to make more videos in the near future. Thanks again.